Good morning. It is a great pleasure to share uh, this uh, uh, meeting. And uh, I have with uh, us uh, Professor Rogério Parra from uh, Ribeirão Preto uh, in uh, São Paulo, Brazil. Uh, Professor Parra is the head of uh, IBD department and has uh, a lot of experience uh, in IBD and TDM. So uh, it is for me a great pleasure to have you with us. Please, uh, Professor Parra. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here in Portugal and to, to the meeting of GG. I'm from GG, from Brazil, the group of study, group of, study of uh, the Brazil, and it's a pleasure to be here. I'd like to thank Buman for bringing me here. I'm going to talk about in the next 15 minutes about TDM in daily practice. And Professor Magro, after me, is going to talk about uh, the most recent uh, research about this, okay? And these are the disclosures. Well, uh, we know that we have to be active when we talk about TDM. Why? Because a lot of patients experience primary no response or even secondary uh, loss of response during the treatment. So it's important to know the sudden levels because of this. And we know that the patient who failed in, after one uh, treatment experience lower exper experience lower efficacy of the treatment in the other treatment so it's important to, to know about ADM and we know there are uh, predictors of favorable response after anti-TNF treatment for instance certain levels of infliximab or adalimumab in induction after induction and even in maintenance uh, a few years ago, we published this paper showing that uh, in patients uh, with higher levels than three of infliximab, they have a higher chance of being clinical remission and mucosal healing. If the patient have lower levels than this, and we used the repeat test in this, this publication, uh, if the patient have lower than three, he, he, they have lower uh, rates of clinical remission and mucosal healing. Uh, we also know that there are a lot of factors that affect the, the anti-TNF sedan levels. For instance, gender may have a uh, higher clearance, uh, body mass, the obese persons have uh, higher clearance, uh, albumin levels, we know that the patients uh, with not so good nutrition and lower uh, albumin, they have a higher drug clearance, so it's important to, to know about this. And, and that patients with a higher TNF in circulation, a higher inflammatory load, they also have a higher clean. So uh, in these patients, why not maybe to measure certain levels to know if you're, you're uh, giving the right uh, dose of infliximab or other anti-TNF. And finally, uh, we know that the the target may be different if we, we want clinical remission instead of fistula closure or in the sedative colites, uh, histological remission. And maybe the optimal uh, sedon level may be different in Crohn's and the sedative colites. So after this introduction, you can see that there are a lot of things about TDM that we have to know in our practice. And uh, trying to answer the question that you made for me uh, in daily practice, when and how. Uh, in daily practice, we do TDM uh, when the patient loses response. So to see, the to identify the inadequate dose of uh, infleximab in their antibodies of, or adalimumab in their antibodies. So uh, we know that reactive uh, is the best direct care, care and most cost effective. But uh, <clears throat> in the end, you're going to see that maybe proactive can be useful as well. But we're going to talk mainly about reactive and when the, pa the patient loses response. Um, and it's important to know that we measure the trough level. What is trough level? That the level lowest just before the next drug inf infusion. So we measure this, this drug concentration and then uh, we start uh, the drug. We infuse in the drug, infleximab or adalimumab. Okay, this is important to know. Uh, 
these are the targets that uh, being recently published. The, we follow the AGA guideline, but Pro Professor Magro probably will talk about this in this lecture. Uh, infliximab higher than five and adalimumab higher than seven and a half. Um, and if the patient has subtherapeutic level, so low, do, low drug level and antibodies, we, we, you have to see if the higher drug concentration of the antibodies against the infliximab uh, or not. Uh, these are the, the levels that we consider now, no antibodies, low antibodies, or high antibodies. Um, and if the patient has high titles of the, the, the antibodies, it's, uh, it, it's not so good to increase the infliximab because the patient will develop a reaction and not be so good. So mainly in this case, we change the class or change for another uh, drugs such as uh, adalimumab or ustekinumab and vedolizumab, other drug. But if the patient has uh, negative or low uh, drug uh, antibodies against the drug, we can do this. If this, there is low titles, uh, we can add uh, um, azathioprine or metrexate or 6 mercaptoprine or increase the dose, doses of infliximab or adalimumab. And the patient has no uh, antibodies, the same. It's important to know when the patient is using azathioprine or another immunomodulator, it's, uh, it's important to check the compliance. Some patients, especially in Brazil, they, do, they, they are not adherent to the treatment, to treatment. so they do, do not use uh, every day the azathioprine, so it's important to check this. Uh, another thing that is very important that TDM uh, it's cost effective, cost saving. So uh, TDM can reduce the not uh, the unnecessary use of infliximab in some case. So we know uh, based on this uh, recent paper published last year that uh, about 20 to 30 percent of the patients are, are they are using infliximab. Uh, but they don't need to use because they have uh, no, no drugs in the circulation or, or very... Uh, uh, and these drugs, uh, if, you, if you change uh, the, the drug in this case, we, we can save money. So uh, TDM is important to, to know about this. And uh, then the serious in the reactive is about 40% and 20% in proactive approach. So both are, are cost effective. So TDM may be expensive, but using you, you save money. Uh, talking about the repeat test, I've been using repeat tests uh, for uh, last five years, four years. Uh, I have in my office, so my nurse uh, collect the, a sample of the patient every every before every infusion, and we collect, we we separate in the freezer this, and if we need to to measure, we can measure after all. And it's easy to execute. We can also measure the fecal coprotecting levels. It is good. And uh, the results are in my office in a few minutes. And it, as, as you can see here, it quantifies the trough level. And a few years ago, our colleagues from Brazil, Fabio Teixeira, uh, compared the quantum blue infliximab with ELISA, the, the, the serum levels, and showed that the both methods are a great sensitive and specificity to detect undetectable low levels and adequate levels of infliximab. So it's good, it's comparable. And recently, uh, this paper published last month in December showed the same, that quantum blue excellent, excellent sensitive and specificity. And uh, finally, um, in daily practice, we only do reactive. That's my lecture when you do in daily practice, reactive. But why not start thinking about proactive? So I'm gonna start just two or three slides about this and let uh, Fernando Magro uh, talk to us. Uh, this is a paper showing that uh, patients with in-clinic remission with undetectable serum levels of the drugs have low risk of relapse. So imagine if, if patients have to stop for any, any reason the, the drug. If we measure the serum levels and the serum levels is low, we have a higher chance of keep 
in remission after this. But if the patient have higher level, or good levels, maybe if we stop, the chance of relapse is higher. So it's uh, one point. Another point, if the patient have early detap detectable antibodies, anti-drug antibodies uh, after induction, uh, we have a higher risk of infusion reaction losing response. So we can predict this in some patients doing proactivity. And patients with elevated drug concentrations may have less endoscopic recurrence than the others. So that's another positive point of proactivity. So I, uh, this is the opinion of the a lot of authors, maybe we can use during induction to predict uh, clinical remission after induction, maybe to when to stop the drug uh, during maintenance. There are a lot of things we have, we have to think about when doing proactivity. And finally, the last slide, this is a paper published for our colleagues of University of Sao Paulo. Uh, Natalia Queiroz is my colleague. Uh, it's a proposed algorithm for adalimumab and infliximab and monotherapy for proactive TDM. It was, it, published, it was published last month in December, showing uh, they recommend uh, to do two things. In maintaining trough level every six months, uh, in those, those adjustments, depends on the drug, depends on the, the level of if you find. And after induction, infliximab after uh, after not, uh, in week 10, and Adalimab in week 4. Uh, if you, and you do the adjustments depending on which level you find. So this probably is something you, you're going to talk in the end with Professor Fernando Mago, but I let this slide here to, to just, inter, inter, just an introduction to the Fernando Mago lectures. So finally, final message, uh, when and how. I think uh, now, in 2012, uh, we are doing in daily practice in reactive, when the patient loses response to identify the trough level and antibodies, okay? Uh, to optimize the drug, it's important to optimize. Not, do not change the drug uh, you have to optimize. But maybe in the next years, we're going to start in daily practice to do proactive. I like proactive. If possible, I like to do as well because maybe can, we can identify primary no response, loss of response before of losing response as well. Uh, improving, maybe we can improve outcomes. Maybe it's going to be a predictor of clinical remission and to stop the drugs. I think if we don't stop usually the drug, but if you have to stop, TDM may be important in this case. Okay, this is my email if you want. Okay, I can share the presentation or uh, Boom team can share for you. Okay, thank you so much.